feels comfortable with leaving him there and, and letting him play. And, and yeah, it's finally paying off. I mean, we were complaining all year about these, these line changes. It was like changing every like five minutes in the games. And they, they weren't even the same in practice half the time. You know, you were seeing different lines every day in practice. So, um, you know, to see that stability now, that consistency is uh, definitely one of the one of the reasons that this team is sort of figuring out. And, and the forwards, and again, as I mentioned before, the sort of the forecheck working. It's you know, it's not just the defensemen, um, you know, leading to to the turnaround uh, defensively. You know, the forwards too. Again, they're doing a better job on the forecheck in the neutral zone. So, um, yeah, it's 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 all positive stuff right now. Without a doubt. So why don't we stick on the goaltending situation here real quick? You get me fired up now. Yeah, because, look, there's <laughs> there's lots of fun stuff to talk about tonight, no doubt about it, especially after that win and, and trade talk and, and all that nonsense. And and the other thing, too, is, you know, with our guy here, Quinn, we'll get into it later, man, but, you know, there's about six or seven coaches that have been fired in the league right now, and Quinn's kind of hanging tough when, when we talk about everything we've been uh, you know, running up and down through with him. Uh, during the course of the season now with the 45 games. And I got to tell you, man, you know, I, Quinn's not going anywhere. But anyway, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in, in a little bit. So here we are. Here we go, KD. Um, Chesty, <laughs> Hank, Georgiev. Hank goes back in the nets there in St. Louis. Uh, they get beat up a little bit, and it's the same old adage. Everybody's crying for Hank's head. He can't do it anymore and everything else. Uh, and then I know, you, you know, I was watching you on Twitter there too, and and who do you start last night against uh, the Islanders? Now who do you come back with tomorrow? So give me give me where you're at right now as far as the goaltending situation and, and what you think they should or shouldn't do. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm beyond frustrated with it. Um, you know I've been pretty outspoken with being a thousand percent against the three goalie sort of rotation. Um, I don't know if it I'm just sensitive to it because I played goalie in in, um, in hockey growing up and and lacrosse. Um, so I I know what sort of those three are are sort of going through you know you you like to have some consistency as a goalie you like to get sort of long stretches of playing time and now what these guys are getting are long stretches of either sitting in the press box or sitting on the bench I mean they're, they're literally going 10 days without starts here and and to their credit uh well to George F's credit Lundquist struggled like like you said in St. Louis um but you know George F really stepped up in his game and now you brought up Chess Jorkin right you, for whatever the reason is, and, and you start him those two games, and now he hasn't played since last Thursday. So, and he's not playing tomorrow. So, the next game after that is in, on Sunday. So now he's he's going to be ten games without playing. Like that's fine. You wanted to bring him up, you give him a little taste of the NHL. But if you're not going to play him in ten more games, send him back down. You know, and I know a lot of fans are like, "Well, he's up here and he's working with Alaire and he's getting the flavor of of the NHL." Guess what? That's going to happen in a couple of weeks anyway when they trade Georgiev or, or whatever they're going to end up doing. I, I assume Georgiev is the guy who, who's, who's going to be going. I just don't understand the strategy here. And even Quinn mentioned the other day, like, well, after we give Georgiev the start against the Islanders on Monday, then we'll figure it out. N- now you're figuring you're figuring out then? Shouldn't they have figured that out before they brought Shestorkin up? I mean, we have been seeing this come. We've been talking about this for months at this point. We were saying, well... Georgiev is losing his waiver eligibility status when he hit that that 40 game NHL mark or whatever the mark was, and uh, then they won't be able to send him down. So when they're thinking about bringing Shostorkin up, well, what are they going to do? And and this is what they're doing: they're just leaving guys in the press box. They don't understand the positives of having Shostorkin sitting in the press box for 10 days, you know. And and a lot of people are saying, well, maybe his agent is putting pressure on him. That on the Rangers organization that he's going to go back to Russia the way Kratzoff did. Well, what he's ha- he's he'd rather be sitting in the press box for ten days. That's going to make him happy. Like I I just don't understand what they what they're trying sort of to accomplish here. And I I get it. Like they want to showcase Georgia. Great, showcase him. Send Shorkin back down. And after you're done showcasing him, bring him back up. Like sitting in the press box to me just doesn't make much sense. I I think the kid needs to play you need game action like getting uh you know practice through a lair and and sitting next to Lundqvist and getting some points from him from him sure that helps but there's nothing helps more than getting game action I don't care if it's the AHL the KHL you know or you know what whatever league you want to play in game situations are always better than practice in my opinion but you know I'm just a fan it's just my opinion I don't think you know that 
<laughs> that Quinn is now dumb and should be fired and the rebuild is being, you know, destroyed or anything along those lines. I just completely disagree with it. And maybe I'm being irrational about it, Paulie. But, you know, I think I've been pretty rational this whole year I, I think with, I got with an everything. I think I got an answer for you, buddy. Let me hear. I think I got an answer for you. Okay, okay. so this is why I think they brought Chesty up, okay? So <laughs> they go to Edmonton and they get their, their, their butts kicked, right? And they have that loss, uh, you know, in Calgary, and then they lose that close one in Vancouver. So they're, they're bleeding from the eyes, three-game loss on, on the Western Canadian trip, and they're coming home, and they got a couple of days off, and Colorado, Colorado's coming in the mix. I did mention this, that one of the reasons I thought they brought Chesty up before, was for no other reason was to kind of shake things up amongst the team and maybe primarily amongst the two starting goaltenders, which is Hank and Georgiev, okay? Because Georgiev had struggled. We talked about the emotions, and he had just a horrible game there in Edmonton and everything else. He was showing kinks in the armor. Hank has been, you know, back and forth. You know, we can sit here and talk about whether or not the team just plays better in front of the other guys and doesn't play better in front of Hank, Hank's age, everything else. Um, I had predicted they were going to get their butts kicked by Colorado, and I think if they had kept the same formula going maybe with Hank or George Evans say they did get blown out by Colorado that would have been four in a row and it would have just maybe that that tailspin that I was always talking about they might have you know started heading down that I think that maybe it was JD or Gordon decided let's bring Shesty up this is our this is our uh uh, this is our uh, magic potion here we can kind of do something because let's bring Shesty up and if they do get blown out and if he does have a weak game we can say hey look we started the kid you know, and this isn't a conspiracy. I just think this might be a genuine teams do this. If they look at their assets and say, look, we're trending towards really going off the cliff here. Um, if we have any way to kind of mix things up, whether it's, you know, trading a guy, bringing a guy up from the farm team or, or doing something drastic, this is what you do. Now, it all worked out in terms of that night. But I'm sure Georgiev sitting upstairs in the bleachers didn't, you know, that didn't make him feel good at all. It put the team... Uh, on notice, too, because they were making that kind of a change, too. They knew that they all had to come out and play better in front of the young kid, too. It got the fan base jacked up because we were all screaming bloody murder after those three losses and stuff. We get pumped all brand new about your store can come in and play in that net that night. And now, like I said, you get the magic moment with Hank backing him up and all that stuff. It works out that night. But I think that maybe they brought Shesty up to kind of shake just the whole dynamic, everything, and to see how these guys would react and see if this would work out for the Rangers in a positive way as far as Georgiev uh, and Hank and going forward. Now, like I said, they can send this kid down. We still have Hank and Georgie, and then we can still kind of figure out what's going on. In the meantime, what we were just talking about, Quinn's been keeping his lines together, and the defense has been kind of, you know, having its way a little bit. They're finding they're playing a little better and so on and so forth. So it kind of all lined up now against the Islanders uh, on Monday night. But that's my thought. I think that's the craziness of the goaltender situation. It's the only thing that really kind of makes sense to me. And as far as I'm concerned, it was the right move to do now looking at it uh, the way it's turned out because you did get uh, two looks, you know, a couple looks at Chesty. Uh, which was great, you know, coming back and beating the Devils and everything else. And now everything, the organization can kind of sit back. They, everybody kind of feels good. Even after Saint, the St. Louis loss, then you get to put Georgia back in there. You beat your hometown rivals. You put up the points. Every kind of, everything's looking good. And I think the, the psyche of the team, the morale of the team, um, they stopped the bleeding. They didn't go into a four-game losing streak. Um, they did beat Colorado. They did beat the, it turned, everything just turned on just Jorkin coming up, man. See how good I'm getting at his name, KD? It all turned around <laughs> once they brought him up. Granted, like I said, the team played great. Maybe they beat a tired team, but that's still, Colorado's one of the best teams in the league, uh, and they kicked the crap out of them. National TV, they did great stuff. So now the Rangers have their options, and they got to see Georgie have come back. And now the thing is, is all of us as fans and as management, what's the mix you want to go with, KD? Are we trading Georgiev? Or are we going to try and let Hank go? Do we keep Shesty and Georgiev? Is that the future? As much as I love Hank, my feelings right now, and I'll turn this back over to you, is I, I, now I don't know if we're going to get better prospects for Hank. We're probably going to get him better for Georgiev. I think you know, you know that as a smart hockey guy too. But if it was me, as much as I love the guy, I think Hank's the guy to go. Um, but I don't know what kind of value we can get back because I, I, as much as Shesty is – 
couple of games and looking good and everything. Georgiev is just as good, too. I think they're both phenomenal goaltenders, and I don't think we can go wrong with that one-two punch. And I think even down the road, if one steps ahead of the other, uh, you know, whether you're going to ch- trade Je- uh, Georgiev or Shesty, you still it's a bonus for the team. But right now, if Hank sits back and says, hey, look, you know, I want to go try and play for a winner, maybe. But see, this team right now, too, KD, could, could get into the playoffs and could cause trouble. They have the talent. What do you think, buddy? Um, I, I think your theory is fair, like that the Rangers brought Shishork up to shake things up. And, I, and I'm fine with that. I have no problem with that. My, my problem is after he, you know, shook the team up, he hasn't played. Like, he's not going to play for 10 days. That's, that, that's where my problem is. That's why you want to bring him up, shake the team up, have him here. Send him back down. If you're not going to play him, send him back down. They probably will tomorrow. Who knows? You think tomorrow? <laughs> well, I mean, they, we, but they probably I, will. I They'll probably send him back down after the, the third island of the game because then they have the bye week. So I, there's no way they're going to let him hang out for another like week of doing nothing. So, I think, so what's so bad about that then? So then he no, does get to hang I, around. I, I and, just, I, again, it, it's, I, I even say in my head that it's irrational that I'm getting like this fired <laughs> up about it. Like I get it, but I, I just don't see it. That, like, then what was the use of even bringing him up? Like, I just told right, you. He, I just explained everything to you. Yeah, but they haven't sent him <laughs> back down. Like, he's shaking up the team by sitting in the press box eating hot dogs. Like, yeah, that's fine. Send him back down. Like, <laughs> w- 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 <laughs> you should have sent him down after the Devils game if they didn't plan on playing him afterward. And now Lunko is like, when is he getting back in? Like, next month. <laughs> and and I don't really, to be honest, it, it doesn't really matter to me because I agree with what you're saying regarding Lundqvist, whether he gets in the rest of the year or not, because it, it's really just not about him. And I think, yes, the right move would, pr- if the Rangers had their druthers, would would probably be to 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 move Lundqvist. But I don't think he's he's gonna you know move or to waive his no movement clause. But the the rumor mill is churning, my friend. With uh, Lundqvist, I saw something out there where. And, and I've mentioned this connection a bunch this year. Uh, Lunk was potentially going to Colorado mm-hmm. um, as a team who apparently has the cap space and has the assets to get him. Um, so that, that's an interesting uh, spot uh, to see if he could win a cup uh, in Colorado the way Ray Bork did, which would be interesting. Um, and then obviously uh, Georgiev is uh, connected to Toronto. Um, where, you know, you saw some, some rumors running around. I think it was Dreger or, you know, whoever who's saying that, uh, you know, the Rangers are going to want a, a bigger package for, for your give than, uh, you know, a, a, a good prospect. It looks like they're going to want a lot more than that. They, they realize his value and, and, and sort of, you know, how good of a goaltender he could potentially be. So, you know, everybody is, you know, looking that, uh, yep, the Rangers are going to trade Georgia, no problem. But I tell you what, they're not going to give him away. You know, they, they see how no. good of a, of a goalie he is. So, um, you know, this could turn into, you know, a longer-term problem. Everyone just assumes he's going to be gone. But if the right deal doesn't come along, well, then what? <laughs> you know, do we keep going with the three-goalie rotation at the end of the year? Um, does Chess Jorkin <laughs> go back down to Hartford? Like, what's the plan then if, if a deal doesn't sort of materialize? But, why do, um, but here's the other thing, too, KD. Why do they have to do anything at all? Why not just send, you know, Shesty back down and let him finish out? If if the Rangers, you know, put up the wins, stay in the mix, what's wrong with just Jorkin just playing out the rest of the year in the AHL? And then uh, I, I have no problem with that. Everyone who, who's yelling at me at, at Twitter is telling me the reason he's been. I'm not yelling up, at you, Kevin. I'm talking very nicely to you, <laughs> Paulie. I'm getting angry. Let me get angry. Everyone yelling at me on Twitter is telling me the reason he's up is because his agent is threatening him going back to Russia. So <laughs> sending him back to the AHL maybe isn't an option. So, you know, th- that's what everyone's telling me. Um, so, you know, that may not even be something plausible to do if, if that is the case, which who knows? It could be. I mean, you know, that, that could definitely be why they brought him up. But, you know, or it could be your crazy theory that you're trying to can't handle over here. Um, no, it's but... a good one. It's working so far. <laughs> I like it. I tell you what, Katie, real quick. I like what you're saying about the Colorado because the path to the Stanley Cup Finals, if Hank was to join that squad, is pretty good because outside of St. Louis, 
you know, and, and Winnipeg a little bit. The Western Conference is is kind of up for grabs. Obviously, St. Louis is playing pretty good. Dallas is up there. 